When talking about thermal physics, it's important to also consider what's called pressure. Now pressure is often uh, just written as um, some sort of force per unit area. And in fact, in your data booklet, that's precisely how it looks. P equals F over A. So that would be the equation for pressure. So P in this case would be the pressure. Now it's unfortunate though that we use so many different things mean P. I mean P is for power. P, uh, lowercase p is also momentum. And in this case uh, we mean P is pressure. Pressure is measured in a unit called Pascals. We have F, well that's the force. So that's measured in Newtons. And A is the area that your force is applied on, and that's measured in meters squared. So you could say also that the pressure could also be measured in newtons per meter squared. Americans like to always say a pressure is in pounds per square inch, right? PSI. So if you could look at a tire, for example, it says the PSI of your tire. Well, that's just the pressure. That's just the force divided by the area. So now in this case, then um, this could be a good example of why it is that you can actually lay on a bed of nails. So I remember seeing a show a while back where there was some guy and he claimed to be you know, one with the universe and he could sit on a bed of nails. And people are like, wow, how do you do that? It's just physics. If you think about it, if you want to sit on one nail, let's say, so this is your bum and this is the one nail. As you try to sit on this, well, what happens? You have a certain force because that force is related to your mass times acceleration due to gravity. So that force is going to be constant whether you sit on one nail or on a big seat or whether you lay down. The same force will be applied. The difference is if you're trying to sit on one nail, well that one whole force is being applied over a very, very small area. So if you take this and make it constant and make this small, dividing by a small number means a large pressure. And that's actually what pierces, so it actually sort of, you know, maybe, you know, goes through your butt cheek or something, and then, well, you probably don't want that, or else then you're going to get sort of cut. So that's not good. So then what could you do? Well, that same force, if you apply it over a larger surface area, like a seat, or like a lot of nails, as long as you have lots of nails, it actually won't go through you. And that's because you've increased the area. So making this larger makes the pressure smaller. So that's how pressure works in terms of force over area. And we can also see it as uh, if we have a container. So this is actually why it comes up very well for ideal gas. Because in, uh, in thermal physics, we can actually consider um, a gas as just a bunch of particles that are just floating around and running into each other. Now it is, it is simplified immensely but we're gonna make some assumptions here. So if we have an ideal gas, what we mean then is that there's no forces. We're gonna assume no forces between molecules. That's gonna be important. So we're gonna assume that molecules aren't attracting or repelling each other. They're just like ping pong balls or pool balls or something just flying around, bouncing off each other, and that's it. It must also, must work for all pressures, volumes, and temperatures. So if it's an ideal gas, we assume that all these things hold true and it works for the same for any pressure, volume, and temperature. And then we can consider what's called the kinetic model of a gas. So this is, let's just assume we have a, some sort of box. And in that box, we have some molecules. Each molecule is just going to be like a little pool ball here. So just like a little circle like this. Now they're all bouncing around in different places. So maybe this one goes that way. Maybe this one goes this way. Maybe this one goes, I don't know, uh, that way. Maybe this one goes that way. So these ones are just randomly bouncing around. Now what you can say is the temperature, well, we've talked about this before. The temperature is just the average kinetic energy. So what does that mean? Well that means that um, the faster they move, the hotter it gets. 
Well, that should make sense. We've been talking about temperature as an average kinetic energy, so that shouldn't be too brain-busting. Just imagine these little ones here just bouncing off each other and having collisions. And as you increase the temperature, what happens is you make them move faster. Or you can say the opposite. As you make them move faster, the temperature increases. Because those definitions, it's one and the same. So that's one thing you can say. Another thing you can say is if the volume, uh, let's say if the volume, well, let's say maybe if. So if the volume gets smaller, in other words, if you squish it, well, then what will happen? The, uh, we could say here that the pressure will increase. And that's because pressure is not only a force per unit area, but in terms of a kinetic gas like this, it's all about you know, how they hit the walls. Because to think about it, if you're a little particle and you run into a wall, what happens? Well, that means you are going to transfer momentum, you know, because you're going to have your momentum change. So you're going to give some, uh, you know, you're going to push against this side of this wall. That means you're going to exert a force on that wall. And then that force per unit area, because depending on, you know, where you actually hit the wall, that force per unit area is going to serve as a pressure. So each of these little billiard balls here, these little molecules of gas, as they run into the walls of something here, okay, every time they run into a wall, they exert a pressure. So the more that they run into the wall, the higher the pressure. So what happens then if you took this gas and then you just kept squishing it and squishing it? Well, eventually they would exert so much pressure, it'll probably break the container. Now it all depends on what kind of container you have and what kind of gas you have and how fast the things are moving in it. But this is the idea behind it, is that if the volume gets smaller, then the pressure will increase. Whoops, I should say pressure increases. So pressure in this case then is all about um, molecules hitting the walls. Right? Because when they hit the walls, what do they do? These molecules, when they run into the walls, they exert a force over an area. So this explains a little bit about uh, these types of situations where we have an idealized gas. In this case, we call it the kinetic model because uh, these things, you know, they have kinetic energy. They're moving around. And we're assuming that there's not anything else exciting going on. These things don't attract each other. They don't repel. Um, we're assuming that it works for all pressures, volumes, and temperatures. Whereas in real life, things get really wacky at different temperatures. So for example, as the temperature goes really down low, well, things stop moving, uh, and that makes things really weird. We call that absolute zero. Um, so we learned about this a little bit earlier. So anyway, this is the kinetic model and pressure, and maybe that explains why it is you don't have to be one with the universe in order to sit on a bed of nails. You just have to sit carefully on it, and away you go. And in fact, in my own class, I always had a little seat of nails that I made. I know to have students sit on it. I made their nails really, really rusty and spiral so they look extra scary. But as long as someone's wearing pants or something like that, you can sit on it no problem. You probably don't want to be wearing shorts because it might actually still sort of pinch a little bit on the side of your leg. But uh, you can still use pressure as force over area to explain why you can sit on a bed of nails.